got it? Look at that. are disappearing, we have the coral reefs are dying, we have rising sea temperatures, all of this is going to affect the coral reefs and our livelihood here in the Hawaiian Islands. So my goal tonight is just to get you 
all thinking in the same direction that as professional surfers and photographers and businesses, that it's time that we start giving back to the playing field. Just that simple. My dad learned to surf from the Duke of Moko, and I was taught by Hawaiian Kahuna Ku, which is the Kahuna that teaches people how to fish. I started spearfishing when I was four years old, and we were taught to respect the sea and always give a chant and a huge amount of respect to just go out in the ocean to go surf. So hopefully tonight you'll just enjoy a little bit of the underwater world along with the surf world. So uh, we're going to start out with, with just a short movie that I did, just again showing how important our coral reefs here are in Kauai. Or in Hawaii. I'm from Honolulu, so I say Kauai. <laughs> and, uh, and so we're going we're gonna to pull that up right now. Adventure exploring Hawaii's wonderland under the surf. Coral reefs are the planet's most ancient and complex ecosystems. Healthy reefs play an essential role in sustaining life in the sea and providing food, protection, and livelihood for coastal communities. Corals are alive. Coral polyps are tiny animals akin to anemones that form immense colonies in our shallow tidal zones. These polyps form a symbiotic relationship with algae so they can receive energy directly from the sun. In the Hawaiian creation chant, coral polyps were the very first creatures to emerge from the sea. And indeed, Hawaii's fringing reefs began forming even before the islands broke the ocean's surface. The ancient Hawaiians understood the complex web of life that was their island home. Their very survival demanded an intimate knowledge of the delicate balance between island, streams, and the sea. Coral reefs help form tropical islands and beaches. Fringing reefs protect the shoreline from storms and erosion. The reefs provide a hatchery and safe nursery for thousands of fish species. The coral, sponges, anemones, and other reef creatures filter the surrounding waters. Coral reefs are the source of many pharmaceuticals used in the treatment of cancer, HIV, and a variety of other ailments. And coral reefs are fun. They help create nice hollow waves to delight surfers and boogie boarders while providing a colorful tapestry of marine life to enchant divers and snorkelers of all ages. What is a reef worth? It is estimated that the world's coral reefs account for 375 billion annually in goods and services. Hawaiian reefs alone generate 800 million just from tourism each year. But all is not well in paradise. Today, the world's coral reefs are in serious decline. 20% of the reef systems have been destroyed in the last 50 years, and more than half of the world's reefs are seriously threatened. Our coral reefs are stressed by a number of human factors, climate change, pollution, sedimentation, Coastal development and unsustainable activity all contribute to the stress of the reefs and make them susceptible to diseases. The earth is calling out in time of great need. Join our sacred mission to restore the ancient Hawaiian wisdom and to integrate it with modern science to meet the critical challenges of today, and most importantly, to teach our next generation how to become responsible stewards of our island home spinning among the stars. What can I do, you may ask? Educate yourself about the complex relationship between our planet, the incredibly fragile coral reef systems, and yourself and your society. Then look deep within your heart and act with conscious will. What you do depends upon your particular interests, passion, and enthusiasm. For more information on our coral reefs and some ideas of how you can help preserve this vanishing resource, please visit our website, underwatertoweb.com. And remember, we are the ones we've been waiting for. Thank you. Um, I did that short movie, and we're going to get to watch a really cool 28-minute movie uh, here in a little while that we did. And I'll introduce Faith Bay because she was kind of the one that put it together. And Pamela Whitman over here, that's my underwater still photographer. And you'll see all of her beautiful images and pictures coming up in here in just a minute. But that last little three-minute movie clip, I did that primarily 
uh, for the kids in my marine science class that I teach. And I'll give you a little bit of uh, info about my background, and I'll keep that kind of short. Um, the one thing that I found out is I started surfing. My dad taught me to surf when I was two years old. At four years old, it was pretty cool, because uh, my dad was one of the guys that started San Onofre Surf Club. And it was the first surf club outside of Hawaii, and my dad learned to surf from the Dukahanamoko uh, when he was over here in World War II. And so they went back to California and started the surf club. So I was raised on the beach, and at two years old, learned to start learning on how to call fish and how to talk to all the animals in the marine life. Um, that made it very weird growing up in school because 90% of my friends thought I was very strange. <laughs> and, and they may even think so now because I communicate better with animals than I do with people. Um, and the only class I ever failed in college was speech. No kidding. So being up here is kind of miraculous because no one thought I could ever talk until I was 26 years old. And that's a fact, honestly. So at four years old, uh, down at the beach of San Onofre, my mom and dad, and, and they surf and dive and fish. And so anyway, my dad goes, uh, I came in for lunch, you know, we, you know, we have to have lunch, we've got to eat, we're in the water all day long. And I asked my dad, I go, can I have lunch? And my dad goes, sure. He goes, come over to the car. And I walk over to the car, and he opens the door, and he pulls out a Hawaiian sling and hands it to me, and he goes, lunch. No kidding, true story. He wouldn't let me eat till I speared a fish. I could not eat. And since then, and Pam knows this because I get to travel with Pam a lot, I feed myself from the sea. I have almost every day of my lifetime. And I have my own garden. And what I believe in and want to teach people is sustainability of the ocean. We'll get into the problems here in a little while. So. Let's just enjoy the beauty for now, and then we'll go into the problems. And then what I want more than anything is for all of you to ask questions, okay? This is not my ocean, my surf, my reefs. This is our ocean, our surf, and our reefs. And it, I'm going to show you in a little while how it affects all of us, no matter what walk of life that you're in. But just real briefly, so... By the time I was 12 years old, I had one of the largest collections of reptiles of anywhere in the United States of America. Um, I had hawks, falcons, eagles. I made my first underwater water housing. I did my own surf movies by the time I was 15, and that was uh, 49 years ago. <laughs> so quite a while ago. Um, and then what I did is I went around the world with my parents and family and friends to study animal, surf, and marine life. I ended up graduating at Cal Poly University with a degree in biology. And at the time I started the first endangered species reptile breeding zoo. And I was fortunate enough to be one of the first professional surfers. I got to do the first pro surf contest in Japan. No kidding, in 1982, it was so much fun. And get this one, I was paid really well, $6.25 an hour. <laughs> and so when I started my reptile zoo, I did that because there was no way in the world anyone would ever make money off being a surfer, especially a professional surfer. So I was a little bit wrong on that one. But then what I did is I got to go around the world surfing, and then I went around the world with my reptile zoo. And then I started this underwater research program about 15 years ago and went around the world documenting the undersea environment, but more so to match it with the above sea environment, okay? So being a surfer and a diver like Pam here, she was a pro surfer actually same time as I was years and years and years ago, but with her family and my family, we were all raised as divers. We all spearfish, we all studied the reefs. And so that combination of being a diver and a surfer gives us a little bit of a perspective of some of the changes that are going on. I started an underwater movie series for kids, and, uh, and you can see all this stuff here a little bit later on. Um, uh, World's Guide to Hawaiian Reef Fish, so I do all these underwater movies. They're all donated, by the way, to all the schools in Hawaii for free through our nonprofit. This is Tahono about the sea turtle. And so we do a book and movie series, and I'll explain a little while later how it led me to being here. Because I ended up finding a really bad coral disease in Kauai, and uh, it's a long story, but we'll talk about it in a little while. 
Now, one thing I teach my kids, I've got like 300 kids in homeschool class, and I've taught over probably 5,000 kids about our marine environment. And the first thing I say to them, I go, if you're gonna surf and you're gonna dive, and you wanna be educated, and you wanna learn more about our marine environment, then there's one prerequisite that you have to do, is have fun. <laughs> That's the bottom line. People that know me, I don't do anything unless it's fun. So the undersea environment, the above sea environment, if we do it, if we have love in our hearts and we have fun, then we can spread that to the rest of the world with aloha and maybe make some good changes. So what I do also for fun, and I'll give you the links and stuff later on, is I do music videos with all of our underwater movies. And uh, this one I did for Jack Johnson and Paula Fuga. And so it's a wonderful song, it's my favorite song. And by the way, all of the movies, everything, are all done for the nonprofit Reef Guardians Hawaii. So we do everything through our nonprofit to educate uh, kids and the public. So this is just one of the short ones here. to restore the coral reefs in Hanalei Bay. And he was going to do that when he came back from Puerto Rico and obviously passed away on the way back. So things happen for a reason. Um, since that point in time, we've started our nonprofit, and that's one of my personal goals is to restore the reefs in Hanalei Bay. And I got to do, you've probably seen it because it's been holistic around the world, Andy's Padlock movie. And it was the only one that 
Lindy and the Irons uh, family approved to, to go out. So it's really kind of a beautiful movie. So a lot of what I do, kind of like a lot of other people do, they do it because they like kind of Andy's heart and soul. Um, and so this next short movie I'm going to show you, and then we'll get into talking a little bit about the meat of the subject of the changes tonight. So anybody in here you can show by, uh, by lifting up your hands. Uh, anybody in here old enough to know who the Beatles are? <laughs> Even my kids at school know who the Beatles are. Um, Pam and I were diving in the Philippines, and again, our deal is to document the marine environment all around the world, but to do it every day over and over so we can document the changes. That's what's most important, so we can be more sustainable and take care of these problems. So when I got out of the water on the, the dive boat, after this video right here, after this dive, I was singing Octopus Gardens. And I was singing it all through the dive. And being I've lived with animals my whole life, that I usually talk to the animals and sing to them. So I asked these frogfish as we were underwater, and I'm going, have you guys ever heard of the Beatles? <laughs> They looked at me like, are you freaking crazy? Uh, but anyway, um, sometimes music and art is a really good way to show people the beauty of our environment. If people don't know the beauty of our environment underwater, they're not going to protect it. Just that simple. My job is, and Pam working with me, is to show the beauty of the underwater world so people will have a concern to care for it. So, which is really, really, really pretty cool. Uh, according to uh, National Geographic, I got a special on TV, it's actually, I think, showing again tonight, called Wind Sharks Attack. And, uh, and then I've done like four or five National Geographic specials and over a hundred television shows worldwide talking about our marine environment. And a lot of them haven't been pretty. If you've watched uh, KGMB, KHON, KITV over the last three years, you'll see a lot of the reporting about this coral disease that I discovered. In, uh, in Kauai. And so what I want to do now is kind of get into the topic a little bit about of what's going on with our changes here. You folks see it every single day. And if you have questions, the lighting is pretty, um, I can't see really well. So if you have questions, just throw something at me. <laughs> I'm used to it, it's not a problem. I piss off the military and quite a few other people that throw bombs at me. So just whatever you do is going to be a hell of a lot nicer than what they do. Um, but the bottom line is, I really want to field questions here more than anything. So let me just give you a little, just teeny bit of history. Kauai and Oahu coral reefs are not big coral reef systems. We, you know, we were just talking about that. We maybe have, if you go snorkeling or diving, 30% of our reefs are covered by coral. But that has a huge impact on our surf and our beaches an enormous impact. And I'll talk about Belsey Land here in a minute. And I wish Matt Belsey was here because there's so many people that are kind of really dialing in on this. The corals grow on top of the reef. They make the drag, you're going to see it, this cool movie we did, you're going to make the, they make the drag on the underside of the wave, which makes the wave slow down on the bottom half of the wave and pitch on the top, which makes a more hollow wave. Now, places like the inside reef the pipeline don't have any coral at all. So that's just completely lava rock. But if you look at Waimea Bay, Sunset, Belsey Land, Haliva, all these places, the wave is shaped by the amount of corals on the reef. So when you have the corals die on the reef, what happens is, first of all, there's not as much drag on the underside. And I'll give you an example. Uh, all of us at Sir Belsey Land years ago, and, and maybe some of you do now. So like at Belsey Land, if you went out there 20, 30 years ago, it was solid coral. Matter of fact, it was a great place to eat it on a takeoff and get all cut up. If you go to Belsey Land right now, Pam and I did a movie out there. It's called Under the Surf Surf Movie. And you can see it up on our webpage. I'll give the info out in a while. I've got 100 movies you could watch, by the way, on Facebook and web pages and all that stuff. Anyway, at Belsey Land, what they did is they built the sunset Condominiums there. Mm. Belsey Land used to have three creeks. Like if, if you look at if you look at the stage here, the beach at V Land, there's a creek here, a creek here, and a creek here. Okay. Do most people out there know that coral is a live animal? 
Okay, a lot of people don't. Yeah, yeah, and that's a good deal. What is a coral reef? Corals are, if, if you look at, yeah, they're, they're little animals, they're little invertebrates, but if you look at a coral polyp, it looks like an upside down jellyfish. But this little jellyfish makes a calcium carbonate skeleton around it, just like you and I have a house made of concrete. So we're a soft animal, but we have a house made of concrete. Now, as one of the little animals dies, it's like a condominium project. Or, or even if you look right over here, we can look right behind. Hopefully no one's dying over there. But you have one person on this floor in a concrete house, another person on this floor in a concrete house, another person on this floor. Well, that's what a coral reef is. Corals grow on top of each other to make the reef grow upwards. Anybody know how old Oahu is here? If you, if you, if you believe in fossil record, and not, not everybody does, so I, I, I don't particularly go there, but Oahu is pretty darn old. Yeah. Yeah, so, so let's say three million years. Now, don't you think that waves breaking on a reef in three million years would tear the reef apart and there would be no reef there? Actually, that's true. It's the corals, and something called crestose coral and algae, that glue the reef together to keep it from falling apart. So the living coral reef actually grows every year, and so now we have something called rising sea levels, and it's happening at an accelerated rate, even if you don't believe in climate change or any that stuff. You, we just simply, with NOAA and USGS and UH, you can measure all this stuff. So we have rising sea levels. Well, theoretically, the corals then should grow upward with the rising sea levels. But they're not. Our corals are dying horrifically here on the North Shore of Oahu and the North Shore of Kauai. So what happens, we have the sea levels going up, and then we have the coral reef getting going down. Why is it dying? Yeah, that's a great question. Why is it dying? It's, it's, it's really the trillion dollar question, and, and I'm going to try to answer what we know about it at this point in time. The bottom line is we don't know, and that's why I'm here asking for everyone's help. Okay, and, and I'll give you a little history of the coral reefs here in Hawaii and going downhill. So you've got the coral reef out there. I did a dive uh, with Pam and stuff out of Camis three years ago, four years ago, and documented most of the corals dying out of Camis. When I got out of the water, I said, right on the live camera, boy, the beach is going to get hammered here, and these houses are going to go in the water. Well, look what happened to the houses, okay? The north shore of Kauai is really bad right now because of the coral reefs dying. The bottom line is that every coral that dies accelerates the impact of the waves onto the beach and accelerates erosion. So if you have a home or business on the beaches here, up and down, anywhere in the Hawaiian Islands, but the North Shore of Oahu and the North Shore of Kauai, that we need to be restoring our reefs and making them grow back because every coral that goes down wears and tears on the beaches. So that turns into a, a pure financial situation. Coral reefs are also 25% of the species on planet Earth, their babies live in the coral reef. You'll see in some of the pictures that we have coming up here, these are my wave pictures at KA, and I do tons of photography. All of the pictures in the movies are either mine or, or Pamela's over here. And you'll see all the different animals that live on the coral itself. So you have all these species of animals. If we annihilate 25% of the animal species on planet Earth, believe me, we're not going to survive ourselves. So coral reefs are important for the animals. Coral reefs are important to protect our coastline. There's lots of reason for the coral reefs. This is a bleaching event here, and I'll explain that in a minute that we did at Mala Wharf. Okay, so the bottom line, just a teeny bit of the history here, and then we'll get into the last part of the movie and, and feel free to ask questions. For the last Eight years, I've done 3,000 hours underwater video uh, in Hawaii here. Uh, NetGeo says it's the largest video library ever done on planet Earth. I've documented the reefs at Tunnels, Hanalei, all up and down the North Shore, all the way to Mala Wharf, to the Big Island, all over the place. Uh, Tahiti, Marea, Bora Bora. We did a cool movie out at Chopu uh, in Tahiti recently. 
And the coral reefs on the north shore of Kauai, okay, started dying in 2012. And they went down dramatically in 2012 to 2014. So that was one clue. The coral reefs here at Waimea Bay, have, in Sharks Cove, have lost 50% of the corals in the last two years. Okay, now we have a timeline. I work with NOAA, National Geographic, UH, USGS, Scripps Institute, just a few of the people on this massive coral study we're doing here. So the bottom line is, North Shore Kauai was the worst. It started dying in 2012. We've lost, on the North Shore Kauai, 75% of our corals since 2012. And I have video of every one of them, and I'll show you actually before and after videos. This is a documentary movie I'm doing with National Geographic right now. On Oahu here, it's not near as bad, okay? But it is declining quickly, especially at Waimea Bay. On the south side of Kauai, on Maui, on the Big Island, the corals are not declining very quickly. We had a bleaching event, and I'll explain that, but we do have coral death. But nothing like Kauai and the North Shore of Oahu. Now, when you say what's killing the corals, what we did is we went out and did what's called histology studies on the corals with UH and USGS and found out a bacteria called a cyanobacteria is eating up the coral. It turns out that the immune system of the corals is degraded. It's much like AIDS. So the immune system went downhill of the corals, and then all of a sudden whatever bacteria is there is going to gobble it up. So it's not really a bacterial problem, it's an immune deficiency problem. So then we started looking at what in the world could cause the immune deficiency of the whole North Shore of Kauai to go downhill since 2012. And actually, I do have a couple pictures of that that'll flow here in a minute. I'll keep an eye on them. So the bottom line is what it led us to is how can a coral reef be degraded so quickly in a short period of time? We went to Morea, Tahiti, Bora Bora, Costa Rica, and the Bahamas to see if their coral, oh, right here, that's one of your answers right there. Now, if you guys stood out here on the golf course and looked up at the hill and see what looks like those giant golf balls, do you realize that those produce six million watts of microwaves each? Six million watts of microwaves? Do you know that on the North Shore, at the microwave farm that is sandwiched in between the windmills uphill, Moncaside from YMA, produces about 30 million watts of microwaves per minute? On the North Shore of Hawaii, they produce the largest amount of microwaves on planet Earth for what is called the electronic war games here in the Hawaiian Islands. Well, put it this way, what's the side effect? What we did is I documented the reefs up and down Hawaii. When each reef system started to die, folks from NASA overlaid when the military put in the microwave towers and when they started their electronic warfare and it overlays perfectly to the day on each spot when the reefs start dying. Wow. Seriously. So this is something we're looking at. Matter of fact, um, that move, first movie was shown by Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard to Barack Obama in the White House. I just got a formal letter from Obama's chief of staff, Admiral Harris, um, and we're getting together scientifically to talk about this problem. The military put out a statement on public radio with me uh, about three weeks ago saying they don't even have biologists on staff to study what they're doing here. And that comes from the head of the Pacific Fleet. Hey, Harry, I have a quick question. For yes. You. So you said that we've lost 75% uh, of our corals on, uh, on the, uh, the North Shores of Kauai. Uh, North Shore Kauai. How fast is cool, bro? How long is it going to take to replenish that? Thank, thank you very much. Magical question. And, and a great question. Corals grow. You're going to see something here. When you see one of the rice corals come up, it's got a black band on it and this white junk. It looks like battery acid. You pour it on the coral. That is a cyanobacterial disease. It kills the coral at four inches per coral a week. Oh. A week. UH and I already tagged a thousand corals 
And when we did that, within two months, the corals were completely dead. Wow. We had a hard time even finding the tags in the GS coin. These corals grow maximum, maximum, four inches a year. The corals at Tunnels Reef over it called Makua, which means the gift. You know, I mean, it's the most beautiful place on planet Earth where I live in Kauai. We have corals there, these big mound and low corals that are 4,000 years old. Some of these died within a year. The blue rice corals, you'll see a picture of one coming up here in a minute, was one of the most common corals in Kauai. Now that's a healthy rice coral on the right, healthy mound coral on the left. Now that's a healthy antler coral and mound coral. These are Dacillus fish and a healthy cauliflower coral. Now I just want to show you a comparison. Another beautiful Pantuk healthy antler coral. These are all there as the baby farm. Okay. Now when you sit there and you document, that's what the reef looks like right now. It's corroding, the corals died, the reef's turning orange. And you'll see in a minute here, um, and, and if not, if not no, 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 there you go. That's a black band coral disease. That killed that, I took that picture two years ago. That's the black band coral disease on a blue rice coral. Now, what we've done with the videos, and this is my kind of deal, I invented a, a video survey of coral reefs. I'm the first one to do it. Now it's being implemented all around the world. And you take with a video camera, and you video a stretch of the reef, and then you go back next month video it again, next month video again. And then you can send the videos to the University of Hawaii and the, I've, got, I've got like 10 grad students and PhD students and they actually count corals so we can see exactly how many have died. So the bottom line is North Shore of Kauai, we've lost 75% of the corals. We already have done an analysis, get this one, and we did this with Catlin Seaview Insurance Company. They're the biggest insurers of hotels on the coastline, like right here. And they lose billions of dollars if a hotel gets taken out. So get this one. In the insurance company deal, they not only came up with a figure on exactly how much it's worth for each coral being on the reef. That's where they're going with it right now, is because they're looking at a liability situation. Once again, if you go down to today, this is really an important deal for the surf community. Um, oh, and by the way, oh, Catlin Seaview came up with the deal just recently said, to repair a mile of coastline, we have 32 miles in Kauai that are almost dead. To repair and restore a mile of coastline, coral reefs, it's going to take 400 years and 200 million dollars. Now, if you want to follow this stuff, just I've got a card up here. I use my Facebook professionally because I teach hundreds of schools all with my Facebook. And you're going to see coming up about a meeting we have with Admiral Harris and Obama's chief of staff about this problem. So it's really hit the fan. Now, the other thing too that if you see on the coastline here, and I always like this when I work with the surf community because, you know, we're out in the water every day. And I don't know about you guys, but when you're out surfing every day, we don't see a lot of changes. It's not like a day-by-day -day change, you know? Pipelines still, the waves break pretty much the same today as they did a year ago. So people tend to think there's not much of a problem. But get this one, do you know that NOAA in USGS, we put nuclear dye in the sand in Hawaii and actually trapped with a satellite because the sand glows. It won't hurt people, you don't even see it. But what we're tracking is where the sand goes and comes from. Now, anyone in here know where our sand comes from? Ooh, butts. Ooh, butts. This is the only place in the world you can have poo-poos on poo-poo. Seriously. Parrotfish, the uhu, eat coral. They poop out the coral and digest the polyps. That's the sand we sit on at Pipeline, watching everybody go out and surf, okay? It's parrotfish poop. Now, we're, this is the coral disease and how we're tracking the growth of it. So anyway, we have sand now that we don't have as many corals left. So we don't have as much coral sand 
And so we're not going to have beaches down the road here if we don't start studying and restoring the reefs. It's just a simple fact. So people go, well, the sand goes and comes. It does. Anyone that surfs and dies, you look at the beaches here, at Lani Camp, everywhere up and down the coastline. Sometimes it's a lot of sand, sometimes there's a nut. But the bottom line is, in tracking it with satellites, is when we had on the North Shore here, right at Pipeline, by the way, 10 feet of sand that went away, 9 feet came back. We had 9 feet the next year that went away, 8 feet came back. That's just a bottom line fact. Noah's predicting the North Shore of Oahu here to have not one sandy beach within the next 10 years. And if you just look at Pipeline now in front of the Volcom House, and Billabong and all that, and the waves coming into everyone's windows and bedrooms and front yards, Camp Highway's gonna be underwater. Um, the bottom line is, is we don't know how long it's going to take for this process to happen. Wow. It may take 10 years, it may take 20, it may take 30. I don't think anyone can really predict that. But the bottom line is this is happening. Okay? Just that simple. One of the ways we can mitigate this from happening is to stop the destruction of our coral reefs and to restore our coral reefs. Okay? So these are all issues. Like I said, I don't give the, you know what I do with my school kids? I mean, just to show a hand, how many people in here have kids under 12 years old? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay we got a little bit older, yeah, I don't know all the kids. Right now, take care of the kids. Okay, maybe I got the wrong crew to talk to here. No, just kidding. I, I tell the kids in my class, no kidding, my students are three, three years old to 103 years old. Because even the older folks don't know anything about the ocean. But the one thing I teach my kids, and I've got like 300 of them, anywhere from three years old all the way up to 14, when I go and teach them and they watch all these movies, they actually are part of shooting some of the movies, I sit there and say to them and I go, okay, I'm in front of you guys, I am not your teacher. And you ought to see the other teachers and the parents are going, we just hired this guy and he just tells the kids he's not his teacher. And I tell them, I go, I'm not your teacher. And don't even get into that. We all are going to go out and learn about the ocean together. And you may over there at five years old teach something to me, and I may teach something to her, and she may teach something to him. I have kids with high-def cameras. We call them our COA kids, our coral kids. They know more about coral diseases than any PhD student I've ever met. And the oldest one's 12 years old. So the bottom line is, is when we get into the next movie, it's not to lay blame, okay, because we really don't know what's going on. We also know by chemical testing that some of the GMO chemicals, especially glyphosate and atrazine, can kill corals. So are these chemicals killing our coral reefs here? We know they're in the water. The bottom line is, is we don't have the finances to test the ocean to see how much of it's out there. So we're in a learning process. The idea of the talk is simply, okay, to bring up everybody's awareness so we can start working together, raise funds to protect our coastline so it's more sustainable for our kids and our grandkids. And that's my main focus with what's going on here tonight. So what we're gonna do, any, any questions at all right now before we go on to the last little movie? Okay, sounds cool. Um, and so we're, this movie here, and I'm going to bring uh, Faith Faye up here for a minute because she's the one actually that was the catalyst to make this movie that I'm going to show you, and it's the first ever under the surf surf movie, combination of surf and above the surf, and I think you'll really, really, really enjoy it. And I just got to thank Faith for pulling this off because no one is offered to do this, and she did it, and it's an amazing movie. Aloha everyone, thank you for coming out for an extremely special night at Surfer Bar. Um, so I'm a producer and a film actress and was blessed to be offered this job as a producer by an amazing film company in Brazil. Uh, they pulled together in Brazil a group of surfers and professional bodyboarders to produce a 
26 episode show that would air to 13 million homes in Brazil and then be available online that would showcase water photographers from around the world because the surf industry is blessed because of those photographers. So that was our main focus. So you have several of us that were sponsored surfers and bodyboarders come together with photography backgrounds and all ocean men and ocean women. And so we had this list in front of us. Um, Toddy Glazer, which is Kelly Slater's photographer, Jim Rusi, amazing North Shore photographer, Brian Bielman, Brent Bielman, Zach Noyle, Clark Little, you know, the, the names go on and on of amazing water photographers that you're exposed to on the North Shore, and their images travel around the world through social media, Surfer Magazine, and so on and so forth. So we're sitting there, and there's something missing from the puzzle, but we hadn't found it yet. And thank God there was a day that Pipeline was going off, and we happened to be there, and I happened to stand in the total wrong spot. Anyone from the North Shore knows when there's a set coming in, what do you do? You drop, correct? I did not drop, and this lovely lady, Pam, in front of us, says, excuse me, down in front, you know, get out of the way. So, you know, I, I turn around with a little bit of annoyance, and then I see her, and I go up, and I extend a little on an apology, because I should know better. And thank God that was the best mistake of my entire life because I got to meet Pam and Terry. And we just started talking, and within five minutes, I'm moved by his cause, I'm moved by what they're trying to do to educate the world about coral reefs, the importance of the environment underneath the ocean, not just above it. And I said, please do not move. And I run across the beach to my uh, executive producer, my director, my other producer, who's an amazing world champion bodyboarder from Brazil, Paulo Barcelos, and I tell them about Terry, I'm like, this is our missing puzzle, because we're sitting here interviewing John John, Kelly Slater, and all the water photographers that are capturing these beautiful images, but we're not educating people about how important those reefs are that they surf upon. And if we don't take care of them and educate from kids to adults, we're gonna lose that. So everybody immediately, because we're all surfers and bodyboarders and water women and men, we get on board. So to bring you to, to you know to bring it to the play is that we show up to Pam's house and we have scheduled an inter, you know interviews with her and Terry. We spent four times the amount of time with them than any other pro surfer or any other photographer. <laughs> you know, it's we were moved, touched to tears at times almost. My male photographer serves for Oakley and he's the six foot five amazing man. And he was literally crying at some of the images that they had, sharing the importance of saving the marine life and the coral reefs. And that this is where it starts. And we knew we'd be showcasing it to 13 million people. And then we knew we'd be putting it online. And then thank God he's been using it in the schools. So I'm just a catalyst for what the creator had intended that Terry's cause and Pam's cause be like heard through the masses, through social media, and through television. So I am honored to be part of this project, and hopefully we will touch millions of lives. So you guys are now those catalysts. After you see this, add him on Facebook, share it on your social media, because when you get his emails and on Facebook, you're educated immediately, and you can pass that information on and you too will be saving the world and the environment. So please enjoy this. If you have any questions afterwards, my name's Faith Fay. Please approach me. Much aloha. Thank you. And, uh, if, if, and we'll get started really quick. Um, um, I know everyone's had a drink or two, uh, mm -hmm. including I had a glass of wine. So don't feel like you're blowing it when it's not English, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the first part's Portuguese. If we have any Brazilian friends in here, then they will have a blast with the first intro. Within about five minutes, it shifts to English. So I just wanted to let you know that. And thank you, Faith, for doing this. It's all about us all loving each other, loving the surf, loving the reefs, and working together to make this a better place and a better world. Um, if I did, yeah. And, and if anyone, uh, I have just some business cards up here, which leads to all of our movies, Facebook, nonprofit, and all that. And then we do sell uh, coffee table books and beautiful movies and all that. All the funds go to 
uh, Reef Guardians Hawaii. And Terry, uh, yep. I'm back here. Aloha, guys. Uh, yeah. We have, uh, I'm back here by the sound band uh, for ReefGuardiansHawaii.org, I believe yes. it is. Uh, we yeah, do yes. have a donation box for tonight, so uh, it all goes 100% to the nonprofit. And uh, I'm going to get that started right here uh, from my own pocket. So uh, the box is right here in front of the sound band, and uh, whatever you guys can contribute. I know Terry and I know the coral reefs and our children really do appreciate it. Hey, mahalo big time. I really do appreciate that. And, and please uh, check online and Facebook and stuff because every dollar goes to making these movies that you all can use and you also can use them in the classroom. Um, every every single one of the movies we make it for the kids. So anyway, mahalo, thank you. So in, enjoy kind of our feature here. Now this is technology. Uh, we're uh, never worked here in this minute. This is an online movie, so we just had to make sure of the idea. The interesting thing with 
uh, for this talk and outdoors is that most of the surf community uh, has no idea what it looks like under the waves. So I'm going to do it this way every day. We're off the kayak or the boat, but it's myself all the time, so you don't have a, a dive buddy to help you out. There was a time I knew your way It was something I could just feel there was a time Hey, hello, my brother! Alrighty, welcome to uh, Pamela's house here in Blue Jet. Alright, we're cool. Come on upstairs with everyone and let's watch some movies. I think I got one of you guys uh, within that pipeline. Okay, let's go see what it looks like under the water. Alright, go fun. Let's go. really a special period of time. But when I was four years old and I was down at San Onofre with my dad and I walked up to him and I said, Dad, you know, when are we going to have lunch? When he comes in from the car and hands me my first Hawaiian sling and points out at the ocean and goes, there's lunch. And he laughs and walks away. You're four years old. Yeah. People that know scuba diving know that when you go underwater, you're breathing compressed air, you build up excess nitrogen in your blood. So when you go underwater, you can't come up quickly. If you do, your blood turns into fizzes like opening a bottle of coke. I broke my back surfing at Mavericks many years ago, and when I broke my back, I learned... And I know it's getting late. It's getting late, and I just want to share one more thought. And if anyone just... Please come up, at least get the cards up here so you can keep in touch with all these underwater movies. Um, Pam knows this, but not a lot of other people do. Um, about a year and a half ago, I was out scuba diving in Kauai next to one of the military warships to document um, the possible destruction of the reefs. And I got electrocuted and had a heart seizure. And my heart completely twisted backwards. And I was pronounced dead in Lahui Hospital with not even one millionth of a chance of being alive. Um, I stayed alive for some reason, maybe to be here and share this stuff with you right now. Um, so anyway, my, every day of my life is a gift, and it's a gift for me to be here and to have you all here and celebrate the beauty of the ocean. So anyway, all uh, for coming. Thank you.